I'm going to talk a little bit about black body radiation and uh, tell you how uh, Max Planck um, stumbled actually into uh, quantum theory. Okay, so the first the concept is uh, what is black body radiation? It's just the radiation given off by hot stuff. So if you've ever seen something glowing red hot, uh, which we've all we've all seen, if we've, we've seen things glowing white hot, right? All incandescent light bulbs are giving off uh, black body radiation. The sun gives off black body radiation. A distant star gives off black body radiation. Okay, so that's what it is. This is a graph, and this is a famous graph of black body radiation. And there's two different temperatures here. The tall one is uh, the black body radiation of a, a 600 or 6,000 Kelvin uh, object. And this is about uh, 3,000 Kelvins, right? They're both pretty hot, but this is a lot hotter, right? And our sun is somewhere, I think, around 5,000 Kelvins, okay? So um, if you look at this axis, this is the intensity, right? And then this is the wavelength. This is large wavelength. This is small wavelength. Visible light comes in here, 400 to 700. Uh, nanometers, right? Um, and you can see the 6,000 Kelvin object is much more of it's in the uh, visible range. The 3,000 Kelvin, uh, it's very uh, on the very high frequency end or low wavelength end. There's not much, but there's a lot of low frequency or large wavelength. So this thing is probably glowing red hot, but this one here is peaking out at, you know, right in the middle of our, our spectrum. So this would be white hot, right? Right, this guy is red hot. And we know white hot is, you know, hotter than red hot, right? Okay, and you can look up in the sky and look at stars, and, and the white ones are, are hotter than the red ones, and the blue ones are hotter than the white ones, right? So uh, if you look at this axis here, um, those, those, you, can, you can see that the, the, that's what happens to the color, right? Okay, um, in fact, you can actually determine the temperature of a star by finding where this peak lies, Right, just find that peak, right, and then you can derive actually the temperature of the star from that. I don't know if you notice that this is twice as far from the origin as this one is, right? Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> the other thing you should notice is that a 6,000 Kelvin star, also the area under this is the net flux of light. Okay, there's it's way brighter than a 3,000 Kelvin star, right? So um, that's another thing, right? So as it gets hotter, this peak shifts toward the, the low wavelength or high frequency end. Things get bluer, in other words, when they get hotter, and um, they also get brighter. Okay, and then uh, you know, then the question is, uh, uh, why? Why do you get black body radiation? Well, in the last little presentation, I talked about how you might make an electromagnetic wave, right, by just uh, making an antenna and pumping the charge back and forth. Right, so you got positive, negative, and then you switch it back and forth, right? Okay. If you think about uh, a hot object, there's charged matter. There's electrons on that hot stuff. So hot stuff is just matter that's vibrating back and forth. And so uh, an electron going back and forth like this, vibrating, is going to radiate. Any acceleration of charge is going to radiate uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay, and if you sit there and wave them back and forth, you're basically sort of making ripples in, in the electric field that are then filled in with magnetic fields and then electric fields, et cetera, right? So um, that's the other thing you could do is you can take a positively charged object or a negatively charged and wave it back and forth. That'll make an electromagnetic wave, okay? Now, this is all, you know, pretty mundane stuff, uh, fairly well understood, but here's the problem, right? In Planck's time, the the best theory was Wien's theory, okay, uh, and Wien's theory at the large wavelength end was there's a huge discrepancy, okay. This is what's actually happening, right? This is what his formula predicted, okay, and how these formulas work is beyond the scope of this class, but Wien's theory was a classical theory. A classical theory allows these particles to have any energy that they want, right? So that it's not limited to a particular set of energies, it's any energy, okay? And so uh, that was the problem, and Planck was trying to come up with a formula that would fit the actual data, right? He wanted, to, he wanted a formula to predict this, and the existing formula predicted this, which was wrong, okay? Um, and, you know, the question might be, why would we care about that? But that's exactly what scientists do, is they, they try to figure out what's going on, right? Okay, so Planck tried and he tried and he tried and it didn't work and it didn't work. And finally, Planck 
comes upon this, this thing that works. Okay, And this is what works. He decides that the energy of these little atoms or particles that are oscillating, right? He's setting them up as a series of oscillators. He's doing clever math to sort of add them up and get this, this curve, right? He decides that instead of allowing them to be anything, that they have to be certain things. They have to be an integer times this h is Planck's constant, a constant that he put in there to make it work, right? And then this, this f is the frequency. So for an oscillator at a particular frequency, okay, its energy was quantized. Okay, this is a, this is a word here. Okay, the energy was quantized. It couldn't be anything. It had to be an integer multiple of h times f. So at a particular frequency, the, it's like the energy level, instead of being like a, a ramp, okay, the energy levels now had to be like a stair step, okay? Now, why did, why did Planck do that? Well, you know, he was trying to get something to match this, and when he did that, it matched this data. It worked. He had the answer. It's just like, you know, when you're doing your homework problems, how do you get the answer in the back of the book? Well, you just sit there and try, you, know, you see the answer in the back of the book, and you, you mess around until you get the answer that's in the back of the book. We all do that, right? Now, Here's the crazy thing is that Planck at the time when he did this, okay, believed that it was just a mathematical trick and that somebody would come along and explain another way to get the same result. But for the time being, he had a formula and it really did work, okay? And then we can get all theory of knowledge about this, right? Uh, if the only description is a quantized description, um, does that mean that reality is quantized? And the, then the answer to that is yes. The reality of these small objects is quantized. Any object can't have just any energy. Okay, it has to have energy that's that's in, like in little increments. Now we've had charge. Charge is quantized. You can't have a charge smaller than an electron charge, right? But the idea that energy is quantized is was very foreign. Okay, um, and if you look at this, this is an exceedingly small number, right? And so this is why it matters to electrons. But it doesn't matter really much so much to baseballs. Okay, it's going it, to it's going to inject a, a, a unnoticeable amount of quantization. Okay, and this, by the way, leads you know we, we use this term uh, quantum leap. Okay, uh, and sometimes people use it to mean like a very large leap, but it doesn't mean that. Okay, quantum leap just means a, a leap where it's there's no intermediate. You're in one state, you're in the next state. You are never observed to be in between states. That's what quantum leap really means. Okay, um, and this is a, a very strange concept, right? Is that we're in this state and we make a quantum transition. We're here, we're here, we're never in between. Okay, Planck didn't really believe that this was the way it was, but he's credited with coming up with the, uh, the first quantum theory, right? To explain black body radiation. Okay, and that's pretty much all you need to know, understand about that.